So it's always important if you don't have access to answers to check your results in some way to make sure you confirm that what you've gotten from simplifying two rational expressions is indeed the correct result. We can do that numerically by plugging values in or we can do it um, graphically. So I want to look at two examples from the last page of the notes where we check our answers numerically first. When you check numerically, you're checking um, for a specific, some specific values to see if they are correct. It, it doesn't check all instances, but often if it checks for one uh, set of values, it'll check, it'll work for other sets of values. But technically, you're not checking all situations, but it's a pretty good quick check to see if you're on the right track. Um, in this first example, we have two variables, a and b. So I'm going to choose a value for both a and b. I'm going to choose, uh, say, a is 7 and b is 3. Again, it's important not to ch choose 0, 1, or sometimes 2 will give you some weird things. So what we want to do is plug 7 for a and 3 for b into this, these, um, the original statement we had and the simplified statement and see if they come out to be the same. So a plus b would be 7 plus 3 a minus b would be 7 minus 3, and we're adding to that, that to the fraction b over a plus b, which would be 3 over 7 plus 3. So we end up with, looks like 10 over 4 plus 3 over 10, which simplifies by getting a common denominator. I'm going to use a common denominator of 20. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction by 5 over 5 and the second fraction by 2 over 2. So I'm going to get 50 over 20 plus 6 over 20, which is 56 over 20, which both have a 2 in them. So I'll divide out the 2 and get 28 over 10. Still a 2, so I get 14 over 5 when I divide out the 2. So the original statement when I plug in 7 and 3 gives me 14 over 5. It's a good bet that if I get 14 over 5 in the second one when I plug in 7 and 3, that I probably have the right result. So let's try this, this simplified result. Put a 7 in for the a, so I get 7 squared plus 3 times 7 times 3, all over 7 minus 3 times 7 plus 3. So that will simplify to 49 plus 21 times 3 is 63 over 4 times 10. My denominator is going to be 40. My numerator is going to be, I think, 112. Both of those have a 2 in common, so I'm going to take a 2 out, 56 over 20, and I could keep taking 2's out, but you may recognize right here I've got 56 over 20 on both sides, so this is eventually going to simplify to 14 over 5, which is the same in both cases. So it looks like we did pretty well when we did that simplification. Now again, by plugging in a single value, you're not checking all instances, but it's a pretty good bet that if it works for a particular A and B value that you've chosen, it's probably in good shape for working with the others. Let's do the same thing over here. I've got n in this example, so maybe use n equals 5. So we'll start on this side, plug in the 5 everywhere we see n. Be careful that you don't lose where what parts of fractions you're in. So 2 over 5 minus 1 minus 4, and 1 over 5 minus 1 plus 1 over 5 minus 2. Careful as you go. This would be 2 over 4 minus 4 all over 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3. Now I need common denominators here. And save myself some room, I'm going to write them this way uh, because this is one fraction divided by another. I have 1 half minus 4, which is negative 3 and a half, or negative 7 uh, halves. If you don't see that, I'll come back and, and work it out a little bit more in detail. What we have here is 2 fourths minus 8 fourths, sorry, 16 fourths. My mind is trying to simplify ahead of time. 16 fourths divided by, um, I want a common denominator of 12 here, so I'll use 3 over 12 plus 4 over 12. 
So in the numerator, I end up with negative 14 over 4. And the denominator, I end up with 7 over 12. And since I'm running out of room, I'm going to flip and multiply and go 12 over 7. Now I can cross cancel. 4 goes into itself once and into 12 three times. 7 goes into 4 itself once and into 14 twice. And since it's a negative, that's going to be a negative 2. And so I'm running out of room, but you can see that I eventually get a negative 6. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 over 1. So I get a negative 6 on that side. On the other side, this should be a little bit easier, plugging a 5 into this simplified expression. 5 minus, three, minus 2 rather becomes a 3, so I get negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. Much easier on that side. That's part of why we simplify, is we want things to be that simple. So the other way we can check if we have technology available for, to us is to do the graph of the original uh, problem and then the graph of the simplified result. So I will do one more by using graphs. One more check. So x divided by x squared minus 3x plus 2. That whole fraction we were subtracting 3 divided by x squared minus x minus 2 from. So this was one of the problems we had on those la that last page of mixed problems. And we got a result that was y equals x squared minus 2x plus 3 and all that was the entire numerator and that was divided by in the denominator three factors x minus 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 1 and notice as I threw that in eventually with the last number the red graph overlap the black graph exactly. If I wanted to, I could make it like little dots to actually show it. So if I turn it off, I have the original graph. If I turn the simplified graph on, notice it's right over top. So this is a pretty good check because we're seeing exactly the same thing with both the original problem and the simplified result.